Good evening and welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Alex Lord. Big Low Country will join us later in the show to discuss the Falcons matchup with the Bucks and recap what happened this past weekend with the Saints. But we are going to start off with the Braves. Disappointing game one loss. Look like a tired bunch. This is a team that played a doubleheader yesterday. Obviously, that AJ Smith Shaver. They also landed after midnight in San Diego, traveling over five hours to get there. Very, very difficult challenge for them to overcome, as we talked about yesterday. And they look like they they showed the effects. I mean, listen, this is a team that just celebrated winning a wild card berth, then traveled five hours across the country, gets in so late. But but let's get one thing clear here: you got to tip your hat to Michael King. I mean, a lot of people didn't know. I, for, frankly, I'm a huge baseball fan. I didn't know a ton about Michael King. Guy's a superstar. I mean, guy, guy's a budding superstar. Centerpiece of that Juan Soto trade. He was unbelievable. He was in his bag. A lot of people were complaining about the Braves lineup. Sometimes a guy's just really damn good. And, and everything that was stacked up against the Braves, and the Braves don't have this powerhouse lineup like they usually do when everybody's healthy. When a guy's going like that, it's going to be difficult to score runs. Now, they had some opportunities. They didn't have a ton of opportunities. I mean, the guy, like I said, was in his bag. A.J. smith moment was obviously too big for him. Would it have mattered who they started? Probably not. They didn't score a damn run. Michael King was great. That Padres bullpen is absolutely loaded with arm after arm after arm that can that can hum it in the high 90s and strike batters out. And they shut the Braves down. I, I don't know if there was anything that Brian Snicker, Alex Anthopoulos, even Chris Sale could have done uh, for, for the Atlanta Braves to win this ball game. It was one of those games, but you strap it up. This was always kind of playing with house money in game two You were or game one. You were hoping game two and three is where you could potentially win this series. And, you know, it, it sucks to say about a three-game series where it only takes two losses to eliminate you, but the series oh, essentially – Punching on game one. Yeah, it essentially <laughs> starts today. And you got to win two. Yeah, Greg Maddox wasn't winning. Nobody, the greatest pitchers ever in baseball, weren't winning that game. When you get shut out uh, – and I think both things can be true. I, I think, you know, you got to tip your cap – uh, everyone is being disingenuous on both sides. First of all, Braves fans who are con- just completely blaming the lineup, you're being disingenuous to just how good Michael King is. And Padres fans are being a little disingenuous to just how bad this Braves lineup can be from time to time. Both things can be true. Michael King was absolutely unbelievable, and this Braves lineup was swinging at stuff 34 feet off of the plate. It was absolutely pathetic to watch. It was horrible to watch. All things considered, I mean, if I tell you, Going into the seventh inning or going into the eighth inning, the Braves only gave up three runs. That the AJ Smith Shaver and bullpen only give up three runs. You're thinking to yourself, we got a really good shot at winning this game one. And, and it just goes to show that, you know, this has been the song and dance of this entire Braves season is, is the bats uh, are sleepy for most of the time. Uh, maybe the bats wake up for game two, and then Max Fried has an, an atypical performance where he doesn't get very deep into the game. This has been a team that cannot play complementary baseball on a consistent basis when one facet of the team, and generally it's been the lineup. Recently, the lineup's been pretty damn good. Um, it, it's the it's the pitching staff, and whether it's the bullpen or the rotation, that this baseball team has not been able to play complementary baseball this entire season. And, and they have done it for a couple of stretches, but not on a consistent basis. And, and to be quite frank, I don't know how you can expect them to when they've dealt with the amount of injuries they have. And, and not only that, at the worst possible times, they're seeing their best players go down. So, yes, we can all sit here and say, you know, uh, you know, we were supposed to lose that game. We're supposed to lose this series. We still got baseball to play. You got Max Freed on the bump. With all that being said, nobody feels bad for us. Nobody's out here going boo-hoo. The Braves don't have their best players. We got Max Freed on the bump in an elimination game. That's all you can really ask for. Game one didn't go our way. That was kind of expected. It's ours. Game two. You got to put up or shut up. I don't think anybody, any, any, anyone in Braves country is ready to give up. I hope not. Not with Max Fried on the bump. So it's game two, do or die. Let's get to a game three. Yeah, I mean, this is a difficult matchup for the Atlanta Braves, and being that the strength of the Padres team is their pitching. You know, they they go from Michael King to Joe Muff, Musgrove, and then to Dylan Cease in Game Three, if there is a Game Three, and that just shows you how talented this pitching staff is. Now, Michael King may not be as well known as the other two because he hasn't been a starting pitcher uh, outside of this season, but this was the centerpiece of the Juan Soto trade, as I told you earlier, and you saw why. But Joe Mo- Musgrove, really good pitcher, as I've already said, this bullpen is elite. 
Uh, Dylan Cease, do we really have to say that? I mean, we've talked about Dylan Cease a million times when he was a trade candidate mm -hmm. for the Atlanta Braves. He's already come out and thrown bait. I don't know what it was earlier in the year, but completely shut down the Atlanta Braves uh, offense. And this is something that when you're looking, even if the Braves get past this series, there aren't a lot of teams in the postseason. Maybe there's a couple of them that don't have star pitcher after star pitcher after star pitcher. I mean, these guys, these teams are here for a reason. They've yeah. got great pitching. It's yeah. hard to hit in the postseason. I mean, even when the Braves had set all those records last year, they run into the Phillies and look, it was hard for them to score runs. Yeah. Now they don't have a lineup nearly as good. They're going to have to be better situationally. It's something they struggled with all season. And that's where, that's where, that's where you get a little bit worried. And that's where you go and you say, Max Fried, you're going to go have to out there and have to give you what you gave last time. 8.2 innings, a shutout, and ball. It maybe doesn't have to be that good, but it's going to have to be a, a start reminiscent of that. Ronaldo Lopez, if we get to a game three, you're going to have to do the same. And these pitches are going to have to be fantastic. Fortunately. It's, it's going to be hard for these guys to score runs. It doesn't matter if they advance. At whatever right. game of the playoff, it's going to be hard for these guys to score a run in this lineup to score runs. Fortunately, this Padres lineup is a little bit worse against lefties. We got Max Fried on the bump. That's a positive. Last night, Aaron Bummer, Luke Jackson, Jesse Chavez stand on their head. The bullpen is a little bit fresher. You know, they've got a kind of reset almost. So we're going into a must-win game as healthy as this Braves team could possibly be at this point. So that's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, this Padres lineup struggles. I think they're the worst in the league against left-handed pitching. And it's frankly not necessarily a a lineup that terrifies you. I mean, they do have the Fernando Tatises, they have the Manny Machados, but you know, the Braves have their Ozunas and Olsons. Like maybe you give them a slight edge there, but the depth of this lineup is not one of the better lineups you're going to see throughout the postseason. And that's why Jesse Chavez, Luke Jackson, and Aaron Bummer were able to throw six no-hit innings at one point. I mean, that, that those are three. I mean, Aaron Bummer has been very good for the Braves uh, over the last five months. But Jesse Chavez and Luke Jackson never – They probably the, shouldn't even be on the they, postseason they, they, roster. They, yeah, they're never – they're not on the postseason roster if everybody's healthy. Correct. Chris Sale and stuff like that would take those spots. But, but they, they would never appear in a game unless the Braves were essentially like, hey, we need to save our bullpen for games two and three. Right. So – the fact that those guys are able to shut down the Padres lineup, they have troubles Bodes offensively. Well. Yeah, they have troubles offensively themselves. Like you said, you got Max Fried on the bump, you got Ronaldo Lopez, and you have a fully fully rested bullpen. The only guy you might have a little questions about is Aaron Bummer after throwing what thirty pitches yesterday. But I don't really think that's much of a question. He's going to be he's going to be available, especially with the fact that we just mentioned they struggle against left handed pitching. He pitched great. I guarantee you, if this game's close, you'll see Aaron Bummer, you'll see Dylan, Dylan Lee, yeah. and you'll see Joe Jimenez, and you'll see Rosso Iglesias. And and hopefully that's enough to get you to a winner take game uh, all game three put the pressure on the Padres and you never know what happens but this Braves team it all goes back to this offense can they hit better situationally can they stop I mean I swear to God like if I see Ars uh, Orlando Arcia who's hitting 200 <laughs> swing for the fences again I'm gonna literally blow my brains out like just find a way to get F on base falling falling over in a one two count with a guy on second falling over he's he's swinging so hard he's falling over and making noises well, you can like, hear on the tv it's pathetic it's like orlando arcia doesn't realize that the hottest hitter in major league baseball is behind him i don't care <laughs> like take one for the team there was the first at bat of yeah, yesterday yeah. he nearly gets hit and i get like you don't want to get hit by a 94 mile per hour fastball and, and natural your, reaction your, yeah natural reaction at the same time it's like Bro, buddy do whatever you're it takes. a tomato can I mean, listen look look i mean and i hate to say this and I, I don't know if i'll ever say this again and i hope it's the last time i say this but take it page damn new york mets like look what they do every single like they do the little things like Jose, if you watch that game that they played yesterday jose iglesias beats out a ground ball to first like they are out there being chippy. They are trying to do their jobs. And it seems like nobody on the Atlanta Braves seems to recognize what their job. Everyone thinks their job is, oh, we got to hit a homer. Got to be the hero. Street. Yeah. You got Michael Harris. We don't you. have many heroes. Everybody's got to be Everybody doing the little things. Everybody from six on, their entire thought process should be, how do I get on base so Michael Harris and Matt Olson and Marcel Zuna can have a chance with runners on? That should be their entire goal. And yeah. it seems like nobody seems to recognize that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's it's obviously been an approach thing this entire year where we're boom or bust. Chipper Jones is it's been well documented. You know, Chipper Jones is frustrated with this Atlanta Braves lineup and, and it's hard not to be because that was painful to watch. Because again, let's give credit where credit's due. Michael King, absolute monster, filthy stuff. But again, you're swinging at stuff and it's Jorge Slayer, it's Travis Darno, it's Ozzy Albies, it's every Orlando Arcer swinging at stuff 37 feet off oh. the plate.
I mean, listen, I'm going to give more of that credit being Michael King. If you're swinging at stuff that it's a credit. And the to zone the, didn't help. Everything was working it's against a, it's the It's a Bruce. credit to the arm slot. I mean, that, stu that stuff was just filthy. I mean, that was my first real good look at Michael King. And I, I couldn't have came away more impressed because the way that he's able to work both left-handed and right-handers pitches with that sinker and that sweeper was pretty impressive. So I'm going to give most of the credit to that. And one thing I have to say, I felt bad for poor little Ozzy Albies up there. I mean, the guy's an absolute stud. He's doing everything he can, but this is a guy who hasn't seen breaking pitches from the right hand in probably six or seven years. He can't he, lay off breaking pitches to begin. And with. he had to face that. He had to face <laughs> that. I was all, I was like, this guy has no shot. I, I, he, unless, unless Michael King, literally throws one hangs one over the middle of the plate he has absolutely no shot i mean he's not like and it's not his fault right like he's in a situation he shouldn't be in just like a lot of braves are this year because of injuries but i was up there like damn that this is this might be the most difficult matchup ozzy albies has to face then he comes up in the what the last inning or second to last yeah, inning and a gets hit. a hit uh but that michael king matchup he he was in over his head there for sure